So I'm not sure, like I'm really not sure if you guys are familiar with this phrase, but um, it's marriage minded and I wanna talk about what that means to me. Welcome back to my channel, everybody. My name is Winter. If you haven't already, I hope you like, comment, and subscribe, or don't. It's your life. I'm just glad you came over to the side of the internet to spend a couple minutes with me. Thank you. So today's video is titled Being Marriage Minded in Your 20s. Um, and I feel like the term marriage minded is like pretty self-explanatory. Basically, if you're something, you know, you're 20 somethings, um, maybe you're thinking about marriage, but you are not so sure on how you're going to attract that into your life. And I'm going to speak from my specific experience. So I just want to start off by saying that again, my name is Winter. I'm 23 years old. I live in America and I am a cisgendered black woman. So these are all very important things to understand when I'm talking about today's topic because I can only speak from the framework in which I'm operating in and that is what I all I just like detailed to all of you so please keep that in mind as I'm speaking um yeah so being marriage minded how did I start to become marriage minded and what habits did I basically have to develop to become a more marriage minded young woman um I want to say like one of the first things I did honestly was decide that I was no longer interested in any casual romantic and sexual relationships. I decided that um, they didn't bring anything to my life. They didn't, they weren't worth it. I didn't see any benefit in continuing to engage in casual sexual activity with other young men. Why? <laughs> I really want you to, if you're, if you're a young 20 something black woman, I really want you to ask yourself, what is the benefit of casual sex to you? Like seriously, what's the benefit? And if the only answer you can really come up with, I feel like is I guess the sexual release and gratification. If you ask me personally, that's not enough for me to be giving myself, um, in such a way to men who quite truthfully don't deserve it and didn't earn it. Uh, the next thing that I did was I entered into a celibate vow. So I am celibate and I have been celibate for two years. That means I am practicing abstaining from marriage, but I'm also practicing abstaining from relationships. So I, like I said before, I don't engage in anything casual. So these men are your friends. And honestly, they're not your friends. <laughs> you don't really have male friends. Unless you grew up with this person since you was a baby. No. People talk to people if we're going to be honest because they have some type of interest in them. And unless it's a like pure like business contract and business relationship, there's probably some interest there on one of the other parties' ends. So I keep that in mind. At least that's how I operate in my life. Any man that I consider a friend in my life it's been like since middle school. You know what I'm saying? Like I've known this person for a really long time or it's been like since high school. It's not, the men I meet now in my life, y'all, they're not my friends. They're men that I know, they're acquaintances. I may go, I may be in business with some of them, but they are not my friends. My friends are my homegirls. I'm just keeping a buck with ya. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, after deciding for myself that casual sexual or romantic relationships were not of any benefit to my life, I then entered into a celibate vow. And then I wanna say, honestly, the last thing I did to really solidify being a marriage-minded um, young black woman was that I decided if I'm ever, not ever, cause I, well, we'll get into that later. But um, <laughs> when I am married, I want it to be because it was of my own choosing and because the person who has proposed to me does deserve me in that way. I want my husband to deserve marriage because marriage will benefit both of us. But I also understood that if I was going to attract marriage into my life and attract a partner who wanted marriage and who was serious about that, I had to be serious about it myself. You feel me? 
I, I couldn't I couldn't rationalize saying that I wanted to be married. Like I really could not rationalize saying I wanted to be married when I wasn't operating in the spirit of being marriage minded. I wasn't doing things that were reflective of a young woman that wants to see herself married. I'm not gonna sit here and bash anybody who wants to make choices alternative to mine. If you don't wanna be celibate, that's okay, that's your choice. Obviously people get married who have never been celibate before and have never taken a vow of celibacy or abstinence. That's their choice. That's not my choice. Um, if you want to continue engaging in casual, sexual, romantic relationships, that's okay too because that's your choice. It's not my choice. I see absolutely no benefit in it for either person, not for the man or for the woman. There's no benefit there. There's absolutely none. Like it, the instant gratification of orgasm i don't what that's that's it like i just feel like that's it that's that's what you're doing it for this person not this person doesn't even care about you this person's not even your friend like this person what's the point like what is the point there so becoming marriage minded and like how how i feel now remember i'm speaking for myself i'm speaking for my own experiences and i'm speaking for the choices that i've made in my life I feel that in order to become marriage minded, you need to emulate the spirit of a person who truly wants to see themselves in that light. I see myself not only as a young woman, but I see myself as a young woman who is going to be married. I see myself as a young woman who is a wife. And for me, for me, what that means is that I need to abstain, I need to be pure in spirit, and I also need to be operating on the frequency of love at all times, but I have to keep my wits about me, and I have to understand that men are not your friends. <laughs> They're really not. I don't, mm. I just feel like in my 23 years of life, I have had experience enough to understand that very seldom are you going to meet a man who really truly just wants to be your platonic friend for his entire life and is never, never going to try you on anything sexual and romantic. I'm telling you, it's just not realistic to me. It's not, it's not, I'm 23, I know I'm young, but I'm also like, that's why. I'm 23 and I, I don't have enough fingers to count the amount of times that someone has been like, hey, I just wanna be your friend, we real cool, let's be friends. And in less than two seconds, they are trying to do something else. And I'm like, I thought you said you wanted to be friends. What are you doing? I don't do that with my friends. Like, no. Now, yes, a good relationship, a phenomenal relationship, the best relationships are built on friendship. But do you understand what that means? See, you don't come into the relationship saying, let's be friends, we're gonna be friends. No, you come into the relationship making your intentions very clear that you are romantically attracted to the person and clearly you're sexually attracted to the person. And so in that, in getting to know each other, you therefore develop a friendship but y'all are not just friends. There's a difference. That's 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 what I think people are missing sometimes. Like people always say, well, your partner has to be your your first best, your best friend. Your you know, the, yes, they do, but they don't come to you wanting to be your best friend. They don't come to you seeking a friendship. They come to you seeking a partnership. They come to you seeking a marriage. They come to you seeking a romantic and sexual relationship. Now, as y'all are building and working up to that. Yes, you're developing your friendship, but you know what I'm saying? Like, did they come to you and be like, I wanna be your friend? No, no, like, no, that's all a game. So that's just my little two cents on um, how you become marriage-minded and what it means to be marriage-minded in your 20s. I just feel like being marriage minded in your 20s means that, yeah, you might be seen as going against the grain. People might call you prude. People might call you stuck up. People might call you all types of things, but I'm here to tell you, so what? So what? You wouldn't be married. You're a young woman. You wouldn't be married. You wouldn't have a husband. So if that's what you want to do, then you take the steps to do that. And you don't mind by what nobody else is saying because they're not living your life, only you are. I just want to thank you guys for coming back to my channel. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe.
right or not it's your life my name is winter and i'm just so happy you came over to this side of the net spent a couple minutes with 